What is up guys, in today's video we're going to be going over how we can create a live currency converter in Xcode and it's going to look like this. So we're going to have a list with many currencies and it's actually going to be a lot of currencies and I'll show you later how we can actually filter that so you can pick the only currencies you want to show because there's a big chance we don't even really care about half of these currencies. But I will show you exactly how we can edit all of this so that we can only select certain currencies such as USD, GBP and so on. And I will also show you how we can enter a custom amount such as let's say 1500 and we're going to change this to Euro and go and click on Convert. Then it's going to give us the latest conversion rate for the euro. And this is converting amounts from 100, 500,000 euros. So if we go to something such as Bitcoin, it's going to be 1.75 Bitcoins. Or Canadian dollars, it's going to be this huge number. So I'm just going to show you how we can use an API to retrieve this data. And it will be up to you how you actually decide to display it or how you decide to take an input so that you can use it for your own application. So it's a very simple application and we can also change this to GBP if we want and change this to 500. And I'm using a keyboard now, that's why you're not seeing this pop up. But if you want to see it pop up, hold Command plus K and it will work for both of them. So as you can see here, we have a decimal pad and here we have the keyboard. But when we click on convert, it's going to convert it again to all the currencies that are listed and you can use those however you like. So the first thing we have to do as always is go to Xcode and hold Shift Command plus N so that we can create a new project. And it's going to be an application. We're going to call this Currency Converter. And we're going to click on Swift UI and Swift as the language and then click on Next. Then we should go ahead and specify a project location and click on Create. And with that being done, we can go ahead and close this sidebar and change this to an iPhone 13 and then also minimize this and click on resume just to make sure our application actually works. And with that being done, the first thing we have to do is go ahead and add a dependency. So go ahead and click on file and add packages. The one we're going to be searching for here is called Alamo Fire. And I'm going to leave a link in the description down below to the GitHub repository. So you're going to go ahead and copy this link up here and paste it in the search bar. And that's going to lead you to Alamo Fire, which is this one right here. And you can click on Add Package. It's going to fetch the data from the GitHub repository so that we can actually use it. Then you just need to confirm that you want to add this package. And we're going to use Alamo Fire to simplify making the HTTP request. But with that being done, we can go to our content view once again. And we're also going to be using an API. So let's go back to our web browser. And this time it's going to be an API called exchangerate.host. And I'm going to leave this in the description down below. It's going to take you to this page over here. But when you scroll down, you're going to end up on a page that says bunch of API endpoints to rock your business. And we're going to be using the latest rates. So go inside here and copy this section right there. Then we're just going to make a comment so that we can use this later. But of course, we're going to edit this. And inside here, we want to go ahead and add a question mark that says base, which is going to be equal to an interpolated string, which will be called base, and an amount, which will also be interpolated, but called input. So this is going to be the string that we will use for our program when we make the request. So it's just good to get that out of the way so that we can use it later. So just go ahead and leave that as a comment so it does not affect the program and we can continue. Now the first thing we want to do is make sure that the API request actually works and that we can retrieve the data. So to do that, we're going to click on our currency converter, hold command plus N and click on Swift file and then click on next. And we need to give it a name and we're going to call it currency and click on create. Then inside here, we want to go ahead and type in import Alamo Fire. And let's go back to our content view and actually copy and paste this URL and paste it inside our browser with a few modifications. So here we have a base, which we want to replace with USD. And as the amount, we're going to add an equal sign and add 1000. If we click on enter, we're going to get these endpoints. So it's actually good that we did this because if we go back here, you'll notice that we forgot to add an equal sign to the amount. 
but we're going to be using four endpoints. And the first one is going to be a success, followed by the base, the date, and the rates. We don't really care about the message in this point, but also keep in mind that this API is completely free, so definitely consider donating to these guys because they are awesome. But with that being said, let's go back to our currency and use those fields. So we're going to go ahead and create a struct called currency, which is going to abide to codable. And the first thing we need to enter is a variable called success, the same way it was written in the JSON, which is going to be of type Boolean, followed by the base currency, which is of type string. And one more time, if you're confused about where I got those, you can see them right here, success, base, date, and rates and you need to make sure that they follow the data type that has been given. So variable date is going to equal a string. And finally, the rates is going to equal a string, or actually it's going to equal a dictionary or a map of string to double. And that's going to take care of our data class. And I actually made a mistake here because this should be a colon and not an equal sign. And there should also be parentheses here. Right after that, we can go ahead and create a function, which is called API request, which is going to take a URL of type string and a completion listener, which is going to be at escaping because the function is probably going to outlive the execution, which means we don't want it to end prematurely while it's making the request or else we will get nothing as a response. So inside here, we're going to have to tell the program that we have to wait for the response to also appear. So here it's going to be an empty function, just like that. So that will be our completion listener. Then with Alamo Fire, we can create a session dot default dot request. And inside here, we're going to start with requesting a URL, which we've specified up here as an argument and make sure it says request and not request. So after that, we can go ahead and type in response decodable of the currency dot self and open up a pair of brackets. And here we'll type in response in, and we can close the sidebar so we can see some more. So response in, and it depends on the response we actually get. So we're going to use a switch that says response dot result. And if the case is a dot success, and we want to add let currencies, then we are going to go ahead and print the currencies JSON data that we have received, so currencies. And we also want to provide a completion listener that returns the currencies, which is going to be an array of currencies. So that's the first case. Next, we have a case that handles the failure, so failure. And we're going to let this become an error so if it's an error, we're just going to go ahead and log the error by printing error. And of course the program's upset because I put this in the wrong section. This should be right over here. And there's a fancy U over here for some reason. So let's get rid of that. And this is going to cover making the response available for our UI. So next we need to go to the content view and actually test this out. So what we're going to do here to make sure that everything works correctly is go ahead and call on up here like that, take away the parentheses and instead add a pair of curly brackets. And inside here, we're just going to go ahead and call the API request, which should take this as a string. So we'll go ahead and do this. And the compiler is not happy because we've not created those variables yet, but we will do that shortly. And as the completion listener, we can actually just get rid of this completion and open up a block just like that and create currency in. And then inside here, we're just going to use the currency. So we can just go ahead and print the currency. But of course, before we test this, we need to handle these two variables that do not exist yet, base and input. So to do that, we will create a state called var input, which is going to equal 100 as a base currency. And also the starting currency is going to be a base of USD. So now if we actually go ahead and run this program, 
it's going to say hello world, but it's also going to retrieve the JSON data we need to actually display. So here it says hello world. If we go back, it's going to list out all of the values we've requested. And since we decided to log it in the currency class, you're going to notice we'll get a currency with a success of true, a base of USD and so on. And if we go all the way down, we'll get the same thing logged in our main class because this is what the completion listener does for us. It gives us the data that has been completed by the API. So it's actually quite redundant that we go ahead and type this print statement down here. So you could just comment that out. What's important is that you know that those currencies are the same as these currencies. But with that being said, guys, that's actually all I'm going to cover in the first part of this app. In the next part, we're going to be covering how we can use these values and actually display them in a list in our app so that the user can use those and make nice conversions.